June 10, 2016, Friday of the Tenth Week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You, my glance, seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. June 10th. Friday of the tenth week of ordinary time. The first reading comes from 1 Kings 19, verse 9, and verses 11 to 16. Even though Elijah had won the contest on Mount Carmel, he wasn't in the free because Jezebel, who was the wife of King Ahab, who was a pagan and, and a supporter of pagan ways, sent a letter to Elijah saying that she would kill him. Well, Elijah goes to the mount of the Lord, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, and there he encounters the Lord. But unlike Moses, who encountered the Lord in a theophany that was filled with thunder and lightning, filled with earthquake, filled with fire, Elijah encounters God in a small whispering breeze. And the message is is that very often God works in normal, ordinary ways. That he doesn't always come in a fire and light show. Sometimes he comes in a simple, very quiet way. Elijah is sent back and told to anoint Elisha as his successor, to anoint Jehu as the new king of Israel. This happened very often in Israel, that a prophet would come along and say that 
the reigning king had lost his divine authority and therefore the prophet should anoint a new king and he's also told to anoint Hazael the king of Damascus the king of Syria now that's unusual because Yahweh is the God of Israel why does God care about who the king of Syria is and the message is that Yahweh is the only God remember on the mountain during the contest we heard that there was nothing 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 that Baal was the nothingest other gods don't exist and if other gods don't exist then Yahweh is not only the God of Israel he's the God of all nations he cares about all peoples so this is the beginning of what we call universalism that God is the God of everyone the gospel is from Matthew 5 27 to 32 and it's a continuation of that idea of building a fence around the law this time Jesus takes the command don't commit adultery and he says that if you've committed adultery in your heart you've already done it that we have to be very careful not to treat other people with lust that doesn't mean we don't have sexual attraction for another but it means that we try to control our passions so that we don't manipulate others even in our mind Jesus also says if something causes you to sin cut it off and remember this is part of that Jewish exaggeration he doesn't intend for us to go around cutting off body parts but what he does intend is that we live a life of asceticism that we say no to certain things because that's the only way to say yes to love and he also condemns divorce one of two times in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus condemns divorce saying that anyone who marries a divorced woman has committed adultery that divorce is a sin and Jesus strongly condemns it especially in this gospel because remember this is a gospel intended for Jewish Christians and the Jewish law did permit divorce Jesus in the other passage where he condemns divorce says that simply because of the hardness of your hearts God intended marriage commitments to be covenants and much like the covenant between Israel and God is a permanent covenant so should the covenant be between a man and a woman and may God bless us